Merve. I'm a Google developer expert in machine learning and a developer advocate at Hugging Face. Today, I want to talk about how you can implement state-of-the-art machine learning models using transformers and native keras. Today, we'll go over what transformers are, the tasks that will solve your problem using transformers with TensorFlow, and putting your model to production with TensorFlow Extended. But first, I want to go through a concept called transfer learning. Just think that someone has trained a big model for you, trained on data that has size of petabytes. It's a model that has billions of parameters. First layer of this model contains very shallow information like corners and edges for computer vision and syntactical language information for natural language processing. In the latest layers, we have task specific layers. This task might be detecting cars or finding person names in a given text. Let's say you need a model to detect cars in an image. You can take this image and retrain it on cat images. This will perform better than training a model from scratch on cat images. Transferring this information from pre-trained model and retraining is called fine-tuning and the whole concept is called transfer learning. Okay, going back to transformers, what are they? They are a new neural network architecture that has something we call attention mechanisms and you can train them without labeled data, meaning they are self-supervised. You can use this architecture to do transfer learning. The most famous models are BERT, GPT-2 and T5. You can take BERT, which is trained in an unsupervised manner Fine-tune it on a sentiment analysis data set and you will have a better performing sentiment analysis model than the one you can have by training from scratch. But how, they, how can they be useful? You can make a bot that answers FAQs asked by your customers using BERT trained on question answering. You can extract information from invoices using BERT trained on named entity recognition. In Hugging Face Hub, there are tens of thousands of models in various languages, domains and tasks that most of the time you don't even need to train a model. You can just take a model from the hub and directly use it. We have pipelines that you can use for inference. These pipelines are not only in NLP, but also in audio and image domain. Question answering models, for instance, uh, they take a question and the document in which you search for the question and return an answer. You can take a question answering model from the hub, call the question answering pipeline on it and voila, you will have a production ready object that you can wrap as an API and serve. Now I will show you how to do that. With just few lines of code, you will have a ready to use model. Later, I will show you how to serve it with TensorFlow serving as well. So we import pipeline from transformers, give the document we want to search in, and the question we want to search the answer of. We call the question answering pipeline and then infer in it by giving the question and the context to get the answer. If you don't provide the specific model name for the pipeline, it will call the default model for that task, which is a BERT model. We have another pipeline called text generation. This pipeline completes the text that we input and returns the completed version of that text. Default model for this task is GPT-2. If you can't find the language model that suits your problem, you can train it from scratch in native Keras with transformers. Let's say you need a model that autocompletes code. You can pick the GPT-2 model config and train it on GitHub code. In transformers, we call the PyTorch and TensorFlow models differently to treat our model as a Keras model. So we can compile and fit it with the hyperparameters that we want. If you'd like to fine tune your model on a task like named entity recognition, you can simply load the dataset of named entity recognition, which is Conadal 2003. 
and Colbert with TF Auto model for token classification. You can create the optimizer and learning rate scheduler, learning rate scheduler by cr calling create optimizer. Then you can compile and fit your model like any other Keras model. Okay, but can we serve them like any other Keras model? The answer is yes. In fact, you can convert your PyTorch models to TensorFlow as well. When you save your model with, with model.save, you save your model in two formats. One is H5 model, which is the Keras format. The other one is safe model protobuf file, which contains your graphs and variables, the skeleton of your model. You can serve this model in browsers, mobile applications, or any other edge device with TensorFlow.js and TensorFlow Lite. In this case, we will use TensorFlow serving, create a Docker container on our model, and serve it with Flask. Let's see an example. We take our model with TF bird for sequence classification and actually use the PyTorch model and convert it to safe model format by first setting from PyTorch to true. Then we called save pre-trained on our model and set safe model to true to save your converted model as a safe model. First, we pull the Docker image for TensorFlow serving and run it. Then we create a new image by committing the container. We publish the containers port where ser TensorFlow serving handles REST API requests to the host port and run it. Now for the inference, we call the tokenizer of the model to pro pre process our data. We send a request to the endpoint. We get the JSON output and take the output that has the highest score with the ARG max. Currently, the labels are 0 for negative sentiment and 1 for positive sentiment. So we map it using the ID to label from the config file which exists in the hugging face. And we now get positive label which is the sentiment of our output. Lastly, you can push your fine-tuned model to hugging face hub to host your model and share it with your stakeholders and even other hugging face users. You can even build a demo on it using Hugging Face Spaces. You can push in several ways, but most Keras-y way to do so is to push it through callback. You give your username and model name, tokenizer and the output directory of your model and call the callback when you call model.fit. So when the training is done, your model is automatically pushed to the Hugging Face Hub. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the rest of the DevFest.